Greetings to everyone. My name is Kelsey Hobson. I'm the pastor of Mount Olive AME Zion Church here in Waterbury, Connecticut. We thank you for joining us for worship and word. We have a word for you on today. We are in part two of the new sermon series that we just started called Know Yourself. Know Yourself. I want to take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse 38. And I want to read through verse 40 and then verses 45 and then verse 48 through 50. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 38 through 40 and then verse 45 and then verses 48 through 50. In the word of the Lord, it reads from the New Revised Standard Version, Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tried in vain to walk for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the water and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Verse 45, but David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Verse 48 through 50. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Amen. God's word for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, all wise God, we thank you for your word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And so Lord God, we don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from your mouth, you know the things that we stand in need of. And so here we are, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord God. Lord, meet us where, where we are. Lord God, we pray for the anointing of God. Lord, that makes preaching possible, that makes preaching powerful, that makes preaching practical, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you empty me of self and fill me with you, that you might have your way in this preaching moment, Lord, that you alone, that you might get the glory. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. And God's people together said, amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise in advance for what God is about to do. Amen. Give God a hand of praise in advance for what God is about to do. Amen. I am excited about, about this word. And so part two, we want to talk about wear your own armor. Wear your own armor. Wear your own, your own armor. And so the theme for uh, the, the theme for this series is know yourself, know yourself. 
And so it's important that we know ourselves. Why? So that we can be ourselves in order to, to worship God, to, to serve God uh, in the ways in which God has designed and ordained for each of us to uniquely do these things. God, who is the creator of the universe, of all things, of, of humankind, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And, and, and this is important because in order for us to know ourselves, we need to refer, reference the creator uh, so that we can then be informed as to who we are so that we can know ourselves and truly be ourselves and to live into uh, the people who, that God has made and is calling us to be. Uh, this will empower us to live purposeful lives. Amen. Amen. And so we don't have to fake in front, uh, but we're able to be our authentic selves who God has made us to be. And part of the problem when we face challenges, uh, uh, then we find that we may have kinks in our armor. And part of the reason is, is that we don't have our own armor on, but we may have taking on other folk armor and the gear of other people. Uh, and so as we here deal with this text, the fact that we're called to wear our own armor, it's important that I provide some context. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 8, we see that Israel, they request a king. Samuel, he had grown older and he appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. That really didn't work out well. And so Samuel, he is displeased because now the people of God, they ask for a king. Uh, and, and, and so they complained and they said, listen here, you are older now and your sons, they are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations. And so uh, Samuel, he warned them about this and he passed the Lord and, and the Lord warned them and, and God went ahead and told them that, listen, since you want a king, I'll give you a king. Uh, and so Samuel warned the people, but they refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Uh, and so he, they reiterated that they wanted to be like the nations around them. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. Uh, and so Samuel repeated to the Lord what the people are saying. And the Lord replied, do as they say and give them a king. So uh, in chapter nine, we see that, that Saul he meets Samuel. Saul meets Samuel. And so uh, the text tells us that uh, there uh, was this wealthy, influential man named Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, and we see that he had a son named Saul. And Saul, he was handsome. Uh, he was head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. And so uh, uh, now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day uh, about a certain time uh, that God was going to send a man from the land of Benjamin. And so he was to anoint him to be the leader of his people in Israel, that he would rescue them from the Philistines. For God said that he had looked down on his people in mercy and that he had heard their cry. And so when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, that's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. So Saul, he, he approached Samuel at the gateway and he asked for a seer. And so then Samuel, he uh, gave Saul some instructions but we see that, that Saul, he really wasn't quite sure why Samuel, the seer, uh, began to speak to him and talk to him the way that he did. Well, what are you talking about? Samuel told him, he said, go up to the place to worship ahead of me and we will eat there together in the morning and I'll tell you what you, I'll tell you what you want to know uh, and then I'll send you on your way. And he went on to tell Saul that, that 
that he was there to tell Saul that him and his family, that they are the focus of all of Israel's hope. And this blew Saul's mind such that, uh, su such that Saul, he began to say in verse 21, he says, I am only from the tribe of Benjamin. Saul doesn't understand who he is. He doesn't understand who God has called him to be. And there are some folk who don't understand who you are, who God has called you to be. The smallest tribe of, of Israel he says, and my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking to me like this? Nonetheless, uh, history would have it uh, that he could not overt uh, or divert the will of God for his life. And so he ends up being the king of Israel, the first king of, of Israel. And, and so when he is called out by God, uh, we see that, that when they went to look for Saul, that the Bible says that he had dis disappeared because Saul, he was hiding among the baggage. <laughs> oh, but they found him and he stood head and shoulders above anyone else. And Saul, he is appointed and he is anointed as the king and he has military successes, but then eventually the Lord rejects Saul because Saul, he was not loyal and obedient. He refused to obey the Lord's commands. And Saul, he begins to ask for forgiveness. And, and he, he tells uh, 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 the seer, he tells the prophet of God, Saul tells Samuel, he says, I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. Uh, uh, Saul, he was unable, he struggled to stand in his own truth and, and to be who God had called him to be and to do the things that God has called him to do. And so then God decided to anoint another king. Oh, have mercy. And so we see in 1 Samuel chapter 16, y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. I know it's taking a little bit for me to get there. And so in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter six, 16, Saul, uh, uh, Samuel was mourning Saul's situation because uh, God had rejected him. And the Lord tells Samuel, he says, you've mourned long enough for Saul. I rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. And this is none other than David. Uh, and so he arrived there and, and then Samuel he took one look at, at one of Jesse's uh, uh, sons uh, and he thought that surely this is the Lord's anointed because of the way that he looked. But the Lord told Samuel, said, listen, don't judge by his appearance or his height for I've rejected him. He's not the one. The Lord doesn't see things, the text says, the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so then this was the case with all seven of Jesse's sons who was presented to Samuel. But Samuel asked, are these all of your sons? And then he, Jesse says, no, they're still the youngest. Somebody say the youngest. Huh? But he's out in the fields watching the sheep. He's not in pocket, but he's out and about. He's not trying to seek favor, but he's doing what it is that, that he's been appointed, that he's been assigned to do by his father. And so he is sent for by God, actually. And then and when he shows up, the scripture says that he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. Fast forward to chapter 17. And so now we find ourselves in our text, in our chapter. And the Philistines and the Israelites, they are facing each other. And they are about to battle. And so then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, he comes out and the text tells us that he was over nine feet tall. He was, he was tall. He was huge. He was intimidating. And there is this standoff. Israel and the Philistines, they are against each other. And there is a, a representative of each army. And we see that the Philistines, they have a giant called Goliath that is representing the Philistines. And the people of God are being called out. And the text lets us know that they are fearful because 
they don't have anyone they feel that can actually match Goliath and win the battle. And so Goliath, he stood and he shouted and he talks uh, uh, a taunted across to the Israelites. He says, why are you all even coming out to fight? I'm a Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. And if he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites, they hear this, scripture says that they were terrified. Oh, mercy, somebody. Oh, but something happened because Jesse sent the youngest of his sons, David, to the battlefield because three of his sons, three of Jesse's sons, they were fighting. They were a part of the army of Israel. And Jesse sent David down there. And what did he do that for? And so David heard the shout of the, the giant named Goliath. Oh, and then when he heard that, because although it was usual and it wasn't abnormal that, that the people of God, the army, that they had been hearing this, but when David heard it, it sounded strange to his ears. And David heard him, this usual taunt, and David said, who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God already? David has a different perspective effective because the Philistines, Philistine does not recognize that the army of Israel is really the army of God. In fact, he indicated that you're only the servants of Saul. But David, he set the record straight because he recognized who he was and who the people of God was, who the army was, that actually that they represented the Lord. And so it's the Lord's army. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then David, he gets concerned. And more than that, David, he even gets upset and David begins to engage in a discussion and an inquiry and and they turned the, the army they they shared with David what the reward was and then David's older brother when he heard about this David talking to the men he got angry he got upset uh with with David but why in the world would he do that listen here David he knew who God was and more importantly also and also just as important David knew who he was because he knew who God was and he knew who he was but then the older son he gets upset why <laughs> why does he get upset get watch this when you know who you are you can expect for some folk to get cross with who you are. Some folk will get cross with who, when you know who you are, some folk will get cross with who you are. Some folk will be cross with who you are. And, 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 and why? Because here he is, watch, watch what he does right here. He says, what about those few sheep you are supposed to be taken care of? In other words, he says, listen, aren't you supposed to be taking care of the sheep or, do, or something along that lines? And he goes on and he says, you, you, I know about your pride and your deceit. So he gets upset and it's as though he's trying to intimidate David, but David doesn't go for that. David doesn't go for that. But some folk, when you are who God called you to be, some folk will get upset and angry with you and try to intimidate you. But nonetheless, David, he did not run off and he didn't go for that. And then because the folk of uh, uh, getting cross, it didn't deter David. But the, so then the brother, he begins to criticize who, who David is. Uh, be careful because when you are who God has called you to be, you can expect criticism. Some folk, they will, they will not only get cross with who you are, some folk would criticize who you are. And so he criticized who he is and he begins to tell him, watch this. Matter of fact, he begins to project who he thinks David is and begins to criticize him. He says, you know what? You, you, you're prideful and you are deceitful and you just want to see the battle. But David, he is accustomed to this and he, he lets it roll on off his back. And David said, what have I done now? What have I done now? I was only asking a question. And so he walked over to some, some others and asked them the same thing. And he received the same answer. Then David's question is reported to King Saul and the king sent for him. You see, 
Although folk will get cross with you, although folk will criticize you, you continue to engage in the conversation and still lean into the things that God has called you to and the things that God has put upon your heart. And so there's some things that didn't sound right. And so David, he began to inquire and have conversations about it and to confront it. Uh, uh, hallelujah, to live into the call of God upon his life. He didn't get to it. Don't allow when folk get cross with you or to criticize you to have you to turn from the things that God has called you to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so then David, he declares to King Saul, who says, you know what? Don't worry about the Philistine. I'm in verse 32. He says, I'll go fight him. And then here, watch this, then even Saul, he tells David, he says, David, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> You're only a boy. You see, but, but you got to understand, David, he understands who he is. This here is a, is a, again, is another criticism, looking at the appearance of David and then looking at what David has faced. But David understands who God is. David knows who, who he is. And David, he's not detoured even from the criticism of the king, someone who is over him. And so regardless of the challenges that you may face, some folk, they may criticize you and feel like, you know, what you don't have what it takes. You don't look the part because David, he did not look the traditional part of a soldier. Ah, oh, have mercy. And this is an interesting thing because the individual, particularly his brother, he knows something about who David is. Because if you back up and you look at chapter 16, one of Saul's servants indicated that one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. And not only that, that the text says that he is a brave warrior, a man of war, and has good judgment. And so if Saul's servant knew this about David, we can, we can also understand that, that David's brother, he also knew this about David. But what he did is criticize him. <laughs> he gets cross with him and, and, he, and, and, he, and he basically dismisses who David really is. He knows himself just as Saul's servant knew that David is a brave warrior, a person of war, and he has good judgment. Ah, uh, see, you don't worry about it. some folk, you know, don't make their, don't allow their issues to become your issue. You go ahead and, you, and, and be who God has called you to be. Because some folk, they know who you are, even when they try to discredit you uh, and, and criticize you. Mm, have mercy. That's a word. That's a word. And so here in the text, we see that David, he is not detoured. Huh. Huh. He's not detoured. So David, he's, he's persistent. And David, he said, you know what? Uh, listen here, uh, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and my father's goats. He says, and when a lion and a bear came out to steal the lamb, he says, uh, I go after with a club. David says, now this is what I use. I use a club and I handled uh, uh, the job that was assigned to me and, 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 and I fended off uh, wild animals. I use the club. And so then uh, David, he continues to set the record straight. And he says, you know what? Uh, this, th this, this Goliath, this, this giant, he says, I've done this to both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defined. Now David understands that it's not so much about him as it is about God. David says, he has defined the armies of the living God, the Lord who rescues me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. Oh, and so this, this right here, watch this. Don't conform from, from who you are. Don't conform from who you are. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, cause people will try to have you to conform from who you are in God, from who you are in Christ. And so Saul, watch what he done. Saul, he gives David his own armor. He gives David his armor a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. And David put, put it on and he strapped a sword over him and he took a step or two to kind of try it on to see what it was like because he had never worn such things before. But it was awkward and it didn't work. Mm. Don't conform from who you are in God. Uh, you see, and so, so every now and then sometimes we might try on other folks stuff. What other folk think that, that, that we should do and, and, and who we should be, and we might try it on. 
See, but the problem is sometimes we try it on, we try something on that we haven't tried before and then we keep it on and you know that it isn't right and it doesn't feel right. And it's awkward and it's weird, but then you keep it on. Matter of fact, it may even work for you for a time and because it worked, then you keep it on, but it's still not what God has given you. It's still not who you are. It's still not the giftings of God, the grace that God has given you. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then the text, it goes on and it tells us that here it is. David is courageous <laughs> uh, and he, he refuses to conform from who he is in God. And so what he decided, he says, you know, I can't go in these. And so and he says, I've not used them. And so David, he took them off. He took it off. The stuff that folk is trying to put on you, you can't wear somebody else's gear. You need to take their stuff off. Don't allow folk to, to put their stuff on you. You've got to take it off and then put your own stuff back on. Wear your own armor. And so David, he put on his own armor, although it was different. Ah, and so David, he took, he, the Bible says that he picked up five smooth stones and, and from a, a stream that he, that he put the stones into a shepherd's bag and, and he's armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling. And he starts across the valley to fight the Philistine. Uh, Goliath, he then criticizes and, and he's filled with, with contempt at this rutted, at this ruddy faced boy. He criticizes him, but David is consistent. Uh, uh, although the giant and his brothers, they'll cross with him. And, and although his, his brother and, and, even, and even Saul and now the giant, they criticize him. David doesn't conform, but David is confident in who God is uh, and what God has given him to work with. Uh, yeah, David replied to the Philistine. He said, you come to me with so sword, spear, and javelin, but I come in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of, of Israel. And, 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 and he says, you know what? Today, the Lord will conquer you. And, and everyone assembled here, they're going to know that the Lord rescues his people and not with sword and, and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he's going to give it to us. See, you've got to know whose you are. You've got to know who God is. Huh? And then we know who we are. Huh? And then we won't get overly concerned and about folk that get cross with us and folk who criticize you. And, and, and we won't conform from who we are in God, huh? but we'll be confident in who God is huh? and what God has given us. Huh? And we'll wear the armor that God has given us. Huh? Oh, and so David said, uh, and everyone huh, assembled here, they will know that the Lord rescues his people, huh, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he'll give it to us. And then verse 50 says, so David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone for he had no sword, but he wore his own armor. So beloved, today I challenge you to wear, wear your own armor, wear your own armor. And the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you through you as you are who God called you to be. God's word for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you know us better than we know ourselves. Lord God, and so we pray that you would give us the courage, Lord. Give us the courage. Lord, that regardless of when others may get cross with us or criticize us, Lord God, that we do not conform from who we are in you. Lord God, that we will be confident in, in you, Lord God, confident in, in what you have given us, Lord God, the ways that you have equipped us, gifted us, empowered us, Lord God. Thank you, God. Lord, that we won't wear other people's armor, Lord God. Lord, but that we would, we would wear uh, what you have given us to work with, that we would use the gifts that you have given us, Lord God, the ways that you have equipped and powered us, designed us, Lord God. Lord, that we might please you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. We pray God's blessings upon you and encourage you to join with us weekly. We want to thank those of you who continue to, to share in this ministry by way of worship through giving. 
Uh, we could not do what we're doing apart from you. And so thank you so very much for your kindness, your consideration. Again, uh, we are in the process making plans to reopen so that we can, we can re-engage and have in-person worship. So please know that this pastor is excited and look forward to in-person worship. Amen. Amen. And so continue to pray uh, with us and to pray for us. God bless. Have a wonderful week.